Today, the work continues on the green machine. We are working on more sound insulation. I know it's boring, but we can't assemble the car until we get all the sound insulation down because the electrical goes on top of that and all the accessories, everything goes on top of the sound insulation. That's just the way the cars are built. So let's get to the trunk. time inside here we have the sound deadening sprayed down this is the Raptor product and there's some insulation that was pre-existing from a repair I did a long long time ago so we'll have to decide about that but there's a soft jute material with tar paper that covers kind of the floor of this um, the sides are still exposed so this painted surface will show and then there's also a piece of insulation that goes back there right in front of the gauges. Here are the materials that go in the trunk area. This is for kind of the front firewall. This is on the bottom side of the access cover for the steering box. And then this is kind of the floor area. The gas tank sits on top of that. So this material is really just a light kind of like it's just a jute material. It's got a lot of fibers to it and it's just painted. So it's not... It's not super durable and that's why it needs to be replaced. This car has come a long way from the beginning, at least since I've owned it. Here's some pictures of the trunk area as I was working on some stuff. Also, this hood was majorly kinked right here. So I'll show you some pictures of that too. Just gonna lay this piece in there and see how the holes line up. Not too bad, a couple areas might need to be trimmed. Really clogs up the brush. You got that same straight edge on these holes here where those defrosters come through. And this is the, this is even with this edge. So this little lump here uh, doesn't fit with my car. So I'm gonna cut that off. I made this little template here with the depression of the hole, and this is a wire harness tab. So if I line this here up on the hole, that's about where I need to trim this corner. I'm gonna leave a little extra just in case. The other thing that's giving me fits in this corner is this is a tube. I, it goes right to the outside underneath the rockers. This is the uh, fuel tank vent, I believe. Not 100% sure on that, but the insulation can't go underneath there. My finger won't go underneath there either. Plus, there clearly has to be a hose that goes on this too. So I need to trim out a little, a little quadrant here 
to make sure that'll fit or at least lower it down. Created a little notch there for that tube. And also on the back side, I kind of reliefed it a little bit, take some of the meat out of that. I popped this tab through the insulation. Now there's another one here that's kind of bunching me up. Hey, it's looking pretty good here along this right edge. Got all the electrical uh, tabs poking through and I just got to figure out how to put a hole here for, this is the brake reservoir. And I think it's just going to be like a oval right here. So I'm going to cut that in right now. And then I think everything is going to be in its final position here along the back. So you just need to, it's got a buckle here in it and you really don't want to stress this material in the corners because it'll tear. So I just got to cut a little deeper. That oval needs to be just a tad deeper so I can slide everything over to the right and everything else should relax. Okay, everything's sitting flat on the right side. The whole right side is done. I do want to probably repaint the edges that I had to trim because it shows that tan. And even though the wire harness runs along there, I think it would be nice touch to blacken it like this edge is. So I'll do that detail once we get it a little closer. But right now, this is overhanging the hole a little bit. On this side, it's overhanging a lot. It's about an inch off. So this will have to get a serious cut right here. It's too bad it comes all the way over here because the plate is right there and right here. So that cutout is to have the VIN plate and this is like a made in Germany or something like that. So this cut here might be a little too wide, but we'll have to live with that. By the time I cut this out, it's gonna come really close to that corner. So be careful on that one. I might cut that out after it's glued down, to be honest. And then it overhangs here on the gas tank. So right there is the end and there's not much material left. So that's going to have to do something, probably relief cuts in the corner if it's going to fold underneath. And then this side here I thought was okay, but it's, it's pretty well bunched up. So this whole edge here, at least from here, it's going to have to be contoured a little bit to make it fit perfectly. That's just the way it goes on these things. So the left side of that tape edge is where I'm going to be trimming. It's about it depends, it varies a little bit, but it's about, I don't know, as much as a half an inch coming off that side, probably all the way till it gets to the front. This part here is fine, but it has to like indent right there. And then there's these little humps that also need to be uh, taken into account. So we'll do that hump last. Okay, I just finished trimming both sides. The left is following the shape of the car. Ended up trimming the whole length of that for the most part. Same with this side, they're both trimmed and I think looking as good as they're gonna be. Next step is to paint the ends as they were, kind of like here, how it's painted. That gives it a finished look and I think it's gonna kind of clean up some of the frayed edges as I was cutting it. The material is really difficult to cut. It's really hard on razor blades. I have some special scissors that work pretty well, but those got dull too, so really difficult to work with. Um, and it's actually pretty easy to damage it. So this right here is like a little splint. Every time you, you crease it, it'll kind of start to, to tear a little bit or crack the paint that's on top. So you don't, wanna, you don't wanna bend it in those critical areas, like right there in the back and right here is real narrow. If you, if you tweak it too many times, it'll start to develop a separation or a crack. So, that's one of the reasons why I don't want to remove it from the car again. It's mixing up some black flat Rust-Oleum. And I'm going to reduce it with a tiny bit of acetone just to make it brush a little bit easier. Tiny bit of acetone. And then I also have this hardener. One of the things that sucks about Rust-Oleum is it, is it does dry slow. 
So I just put a couple drops of this in there. So we'll speed up the drying process and make sure it doesn't like stick to the side of the car. That's plenty. Just trying not to get paint everywhere. So I'm gonna put a little bit of this underneath as well. I think I managed to get it touched up without ruining any of the paint anywhere. So only on the outer perimeter, I touched it up and I'm going to let it dry for another hour or so. I'll come back and start gluing this thing down. And one of the cool things about painting the edge is you can, you can kind of tap it down. Any of those loose fibers, you just, you just kind of tidy up the edges a little bit. Just push those little, little loose hairs down in there and it's pretty dry not coming off of my fingers so I think it's time now to start gluing it back in and this part might be a little cringy I am going with the syringe method to get the glue underneath there I'm gonna squirt it in there and kind of brush it around a little bit it shouldn't take as much glue because the back of this has some asphalt on it and like I said, I'm just trying to get it on the edges and areas where it floats around a little bit. So bear with me, this might be hard to watch. So before I push it down, I want that to tack up a little bit. So I'm not gonna apply pressure, just gonna leave it standing up some and then I'll push it down. If you're curious, I used almost a, you know, probably three quarters of the syringe. The glue's in there. While that's drying, I, you know, this is probably better than original or over restored, whatever you want to call it. But I guess it's in my nature just to do the very best that I can. If it comes out better than factory, then so be it. I don't really mind that. Uh, I just want it to look tidy and finished and like not just thrown in. Even though this is a kit, pre-cut kit, you, you pretty much have to recut it in my opinion. Um, I don't know that it would fit without being really lumpy if you didn't cut anything at all. And it's difficult to work with. So think about this when you're taking your car to a shop. That's what costs so much money. It's not so much the materials. It's basically the time to make those materials fit. And because I'm not a shop and this is my personal car, I can devote as much time as I want to it without sort of getting into uh, financial distress. Most importantly, I want to shift this thing as far over as I can. There's a slightly different angle um, but it, it's in there, it's definitely down. It's not shifting, it's not bulging or anything. This is a little bit of a crease right here, uh, which is good because it's, it's held down. It's all, it's all in the right place. And I met my marks right there. This little guy stayed, stayed down in the corner right there. Um, the edges look nice and tidy. I got a little bit of weight on that side, just, just holding, holding that part down. This depression with the glue on it is apparent. You can see where the, the hump is there for the, the uh, steering columns. And now that the bottom is in, I'm gonna go back to this piece. Just feel like it needs a little bit of a relief right there, which I can probably do while I'm here. I'm using a lot more glue on this piece because it's a vertical piece.
Okay, that part went pretty well. Um, it's definitely glued down. The holes are lined up pretty well. That upper hole is just a little bit off, but it'll be okay. I'm not sure I need to glue this part down. It feels like when the gas tank goes in, it's going to push the insulation exactly where it needs to be. If I do glue it down now and the tank doesn't fit, then it's gonna be a mess to trim it because it's gonna be solid glued. So I'm gonna leave it at this point right now. I can always glue it later, but I don't wanna go too far without fitting the tank, which is, gonna be kind of a big ordeal. I'll show you what's up with the tank here in a minute. So this plate goes over the top and I'll cut the holes in there, probably poke the holes in from the other side, but this is gonna get screwed down over the top of the, the uh, jute material. So that's gonna help hold it down as well. And I need to, one, put the insulation on the back, but before I do that, I need to remove the texture. This is not supposed to be textured. It's supposed to be uh, black semi-gloss or satin. So uh, Mario accidentally painted that um, textured. And so I'm gonna strip it and repaint that when I get some time. Then the wire harness gets routed along there. There's definitely more stuff that goes on the back, like the fuse panel and all that. So okay, here's the issue with the tank. It looks great. It's been painted, has the insulation put on it, but the sender, um, and I've known this for a while. This is um, a replacement tank from, I guess, the early 90s or late 90s. And it has this uh, hole pattern welded in backwards. So this, this here is supposed to be up here. So what happens, and what I did last time, is the fuel sender won't go in correctly. So I had to slot the holes and bend the arm a little bit to make this tank work. Okay, this is the fuel sender and see how it has that, that bend in it? That's not normal. Um, that's just what I had to do to make it work. So when this goes in the tank, it really needs to be mounted the other way. So this is supposed to be pointing over there. It's just backwards. See how it says video on the wrong side? So this, I guess, happened to a few hundred gas tanks I'm not the only one with this problem. This is the original one dated 264. It's the correct one for my car. Yeah, I'm not gonna do any more tonight. Uh, my back is starting to get tired after leaning over the car and pushing and cutting. It's been several hours of bending over. So I'm not gonna try to do anything with the tank today and risk dropping it or hurting myself. So I'm gonna end this one here. Thank you guys for watching. If you have an idea on the fuel tank and maybe a good solution for that, let me know in the comments below. It's kind of a weird thing from a Porsche part. The only saving grace in, in that is that Porsche makes mistakes too.